Payments, they're scary. A lot can go wrong implementing e-commerce functionality into your own website, right? Wrong. Yeah, not really. This is a high level overview of how I like doing e-commerce in my apps that I think will work really well for you too. And this is the really nice e-commerce setup I'm talking about. On the front end and kind of back end, for some aspects, we use Next.js. Then for all the logic and as the CMS right here, for the products, for the orders, as the payment gateway, super important, we're using Shopify. We don't need to handle that at all. It's all done for us. And in practice, it looks like this. This is the locally hosted version. You can see a bunch of products or just one product, a bunch of those scrolling through the design design is totally up to you, it's not the focus of this demo at all, but we can click on the product, have the image load after some time. In development, obviously, it's a bit slower, but there's also a deployed version. The URL is weird, don't worry about it, this is super fast, this is extremely performant. And what I've added is a big ass t-shirt. So where does this big ass t-shirt come from? Well, let's look into our overview. Once the user requests our page, we need the products. And these products come right here from Shopify once the page loads. That means we have access to all our products. Let me show you that right here inside of Shopify. And this is especially useful if you're a freelance worker doing this for somebody because Shopify is a extremely battle tested, scales very well and is super intuitive for people, for non-tech savvy people to use. So we can just click add product right here. Let's add some big ass pants. Let me drag an image in here. By the way, if you own this image, please don't sue me. This is just a demo project. Let's give it a description, big ass pants and now we also want to say to Shopify that we have some of these in stock so let's just quickly increment them click save and do we need to save again no we don't all right awesome so we added a product inside of Shopify and let's refresh our page and hopefully that works it didn't work and the reason is that I forgot to give a price to the product so don't be confused as to why it doesn't show up right now and then we can also purchase the products and all the payment logic is handled for us so once we click on the buy now button inside of our cart we're gonna get navigated to a hosted checkout page which is very normal if you're using something like stripe you know this like lemon squeezy you already know this and it's the exact same with Shopify so if I add this to the cart the big ass t-shirt we can see it costs 7,000 euros let me zoom in and then as the total we also have 7,000 euros we can click proceed to checkout and that's gonna take us to a hosted Shopify page right here and this is really cool because all the payment logic is gone we don't have to worry about anything this is a hosted page for the users that are trying to buy your products that means we can just take an example credit card from Shopify if we continue to payment we can just enter any example number because this is in test mode we can just type anything here in any security code and that's gonna work as the card. We can click review order and your customer will be able to do this as well. And then we can just click pay now and that's always gonna work because again, we're in test mode. And the very cool thing is not only this hosted checkout page, but now we can see that the order got added inside of Shopify. If I drag the interface over right here, we can see now there are two orders. There was one before because I tested this application specifically, but we can see one order just got added and that is the big ass t-shirt that we just ordered. This is really cool if you have people that are non-tech savvy because they can add products easily, they can see the orders and fulfill them and there are a lot of Shopify apps you can use to do that. So I think if you're working either solo or with freelance clients, this is a really cool solution to handle your e-commerce. One interesting thing that I quickly wanted to mention is how the card works because we are creating some kind of context or hook for that that we can reuse across the entire application. And what that does for us is if we click the add to cart button right here, you can see we're using React query to handle that. We're posting to an API with the selected variant ID that we want to add to our cart. And all the logic is then done in that API route by Shopify and appended to the cookie value called cart ID. So we don't need to worry about any of that. And then once that is successful, once the API route has added that item to our cart or Shopify has done that for us, we can refresh the cart, which is nothing else than this function right here. So we refetch the content of the cart from Shopify and display it to the user. And that's what allows us 
to have this functionality right here where the card is automatically updated once the API route returns successfully. Hey, let me know if you have ever implemented e-commerce functionality into your site. I bet 99% of you use Stripe for that because Stripe is a really great tool to achieve pretty much the same thing. Shopify has a bunch more payment providers and it also provides the whole backend thing with products and orders and so on. But just for payments, Stripe can be really cool as well. Maybe you use something entirely different. If so, let me know down below. I really hope you enjoyed this video and my approach to e-commerce. That's gonna be it for me. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.